um, good evening, everybody, and thank you very much for coming on. Um, <clears throat> I might look, I might be a little bit nasal, a little bit red. That's because it's a bad allergy day. So for all those who have allergies, I sympathize with you. Um, but uh, please um, forgive me. Don't worry about it. I'm feeling okay, Baruch Hashem, other than the allergies. Um, I want to, uh, first of all, again, I know that everybody has plenty to do, and especially with the fact that we have all the kids, Baruch Hashem, on our heads a whole day, then uh, finally when they uh, think about going to sleep at night, um, it's kind of our own time that we finally have, and being able to take the time to discuss this is uh, something that I don't take for granted, and I very much appreciate it. Um, so I just want to welcome everybody on there. I'm Shmuel Khan from Khaverian Boys. I'm introducing that only because I know that they are uh, parents here who are not from Khaverian Boys. This is not strictly a Khaverian Boys issue. Um, I believe this is a community issue. Actually, there's so many different ways this may pan out. There is a possibility that other day camps can open, Khaveri Boys can't because we are renters on a sleepaway camp. So that's just one of the possibilities. I'm throwing that out just to make this clear that this is not strictly Khaverian Boys. Obviously, I'm in the day camp business for 10 years, in the camping business 15 years. I have my hands on the pulse in terms of what I think kids need. I'm a school principal, um, so I'm aware of that as well. I'm doing remote learning. I'm a father. Um, to four sweet kinelach, so I know that angle of it as well. Um, so I'm coming from different angles over here, but again, this is not about Khaverian boys. Um, this is about day camps. Obviously, I'm going to present it from my experience and from what I know about Khaverian boys, um, but it's not strictly about that. Um, let me begin. I have a slide presentation that will just help keep it focused. Um, if at any point you have a particular question, use the chat. I'm sure you all know how to use Zoom. Use the chat to be able to ask those questions, and if we can answer them, then Adraba. Um, the main theme, again, it's a discussion. It's not, I'm not the governor of New York, at least not yet, um, and I'm not um, here to be able, and I'm definitely, I'm, I don't work for the CDC or, or the Trump administration. So I, it's, <clears throat> it's really a discussion, and my goal of this um, Zoom meeting is to be able to start that discussion, a discussion that will um, hopefully generate results. But I think that it's important to have discussion instead of just letting things roll and stay where they are. So bear with me as I open the presentation. We'll get started in a moment. <clears throat> so... Um, I, I want it, like I, like I termed it over here, it's really a question of how, not if. I think that is really what the discussion has to be um, when we're talking about day camps for this summer. I think the discussion has to be is how do we open day camps? Um, the United States of America put a man on the moon. We, we kind of figured out how to do very complex and complicated things. So, um, you know, I think one of them is to discuss how can we open day camps? I also want to make a very clear statement um, to anybody from the press who might be on here because I did invite some um, and for my parent body and for myself. And that is that this is not um, this meeting or this advocacy is not there to criticize the lockdown. I'm not advocating for things to be open before their time. I'm not aligned with those who claim the you know, issues of religious freedom. They're entitled to their opinion as well. I'm not challenging that, but that's not where I'm coming from. Uh, I you know, believe that our mitzvah of was what we were doing for nine weeks, um, doing it very well. If Again, I don't mean to stick myself into the picture. For nine weeks, I did not leave the house other than few um, excursions to the grocery, four to be exact. Uh, late at night, my children played outside this Shabbos for the first time since Purim um, and with masks. So I've been living by the lockdown by the book. Um, I've abided by it. And this is not about, you know, kind of a conspiracy theory of claiming somehow that the lockdown is some, you know, uh, government uh, intrusion. It was what was needed to be done. That's not the discussion. All that we're asking, and hopefully that will be the focus of the advocacy here, is that while we reopen the state, which is now the process, keep us being day camps. And more than that, the children who need the day camps keep us on top of the list. And that is what this focus is about and nothing else. Now, where do we stand? That's the question, everybody. I get this question from many parents and from many, many other people um, asking, where do we stand um, right now in terms of like, you know, what are they saying? Are they saying yes or are they saying no? Um, obviously, you know, there's every day the governor gets on and talks for a few hours and so do uh, his, uh, the, the mayor and the other officials. And the 
the talk, the language are phases. And if you're not familiar with that, I'll bring you up to speed very quickly on that. And that is, is they're talking about the state reopening in phases, in stages. Um, so till now, only essential businesses were open. That in itself can raise an eyebrow. What's essential? Wine stores are essential. Uh, Walmart on all its departments is essential. Target on all its departments is essential, including the toy store and everything else. Um, Maz and Paz shops were not considered to be essential. Ice cream trucks are essential. Restaurants are essential. Obviously, hospitals and so on are essential. But <clears throat> in other words, essential itself being very subjective um, to what, you know, what they consider essential. And uh, in the following phases or stages that they're opening, the idea is, is that businesses that are considered to be more essential um, or the, either they're more essential than others in the government's eyes, that's key word over here, or that they're easier to operate safely, those are the ones that are going to be opening up first. And it's very interesting is that in every state, and this is something very important, what is essential to open first is very different. So I'm showing you in phase one in New York, it's fishing, hunting, uh, retail stores, curbside, in, you know, with, with curbside or, or, or pickup. Um, in other states, for example, camping made it to the second stage. In New York, camping did not make it till the fourth stage. So in other words, in the government's eyes, for a day camp or a sleepaway camp to open is really only in the fourth. It's in the bottom of the totem pole. Um, for in, in other states, <clears throat> excuse me, um, which I didn't want to bore you with all the, the you know, the, the, the slides, um, camp is, uh, summer camps are in the second phase. So again, it's subjective to a government thing. This is not Toyota Messina. This is not, you know, uh, you know, necessarily even doctors are saying it. This is government officials or, or, or bureaucrats or whatever you want to call them who are determining what is uh, uh, essential, what is important in the opening phases. Who calls the shots is very important because there's been a lot of rumoring about the locals in Sullivan County. The locals in Sullivan County have been making some noise, some of them. They said they don't want the Brooklyn kids from the epicenter. Um, does that mean they don't want us because we're Jewish? I don't know. Good question. I'm not here to, to, to you know, push that question. You know, it's not like um, we're going to solve that issue if there is one. The point is, is that the locals really don't have much of a choice. They were going to pull some emergency rules. They actually tried right in the beginning of it to pull some emergency rule. The governor threw it out. Bottom line is it's Governor Como and CDC and the Department of Health. And that's why I put local authorities there on the bottom. They are, um, they're a drop in a bucket. They have a say, obviously, because like any citizen has a say and localities have a say. Um, and it's important that we work together with them and satisfy them. They are, we, you know, we're, so to speak, are living among them. But the ones who are calling the shot is the governor. Um, and then the Department of Health and the CDC obviously play a role because they give recommendations as to how it could work. But ultimately, it is uh, up to the governor. So it's important that when we're talking about uh, advocating or putting our efforts, it's important to understand where we're putting those efforts. And we're putting those efforts into the governor um, and, and his departments, not into the locals. That's not what it's about. We can have the best relationships with the locals or the opposite. Um, I always believe in good relationship, but that's not what is going to make it or break it. Now, again, I, I, I just want to interrupt again, because since I started, I mean, I start on time because that's where I am. Uh, there's about 40, 50 people that just joined in the last three, four minutes. I want to clarify again. Uh, this is not a conversation strictly about Haverian Boys. This is about day camps in general. Obviously, I'm in the day camp business for 10 years. Um, I, I, I know what kids, you know, gain from day camp. That's why I'm pushing it and pursuing it. It's not, um, you know, only about Haverian boys. And, uh, and also, as we mentioned before, what it's not about, it's not about some uh, advocacy to claim that this is, you know, that the whole lockdown was some government, you know, conspiracy or something like that. Like I wrote in the slide before, it's not what it's about. The mitzvah of a chai bohem is what we abide by. We're talking now in the phases of reopening. What is it that we want the government to see as important? It's important for them golf courses. It's not important necessarily for me and for you. So it's really about getting them to see the same importance. So I'm sorry, I'm just interrupting with that again, just to bring those who have just joined up to speed on that part. Um, okay, so then the question is, what we're, what we're asking, what do we want to come out? What we're asking is to make day camps a priority. Um, and I, I'm emphasizing day camps, and I'll get to that in a second, but making day camps, or all camps, let, let's use universal language now, 
making camps a priority and understanding that it is important, it is essential at this point, that's obviously not as essential as medical facilities, but it's essential right now when the crisis is behind us and we're just being uh, you know, cautious, it is essential that day camps open. Now, the question is why? Um, and some might feel as uh, why uh, Shmuel Kohn, because you own a day camp. Uh, I wanna take a moment to explain. I don't stand to lose uh, not a dime if day camp doesn't open this year. Um, we are renters. Um, we take, you know, whatever we pull in and we, so to speak, spend it on the camp. It's not a for-profit. Um, we're very good when we don't lose, Baruch Hashem, and it's a good year. And uh, we're not a for-profit. We are there because we believe in what we're doing. And if Khalila wouldn't open, the money is put away in a pot. We did not spend it. We're going to refund all the parents, and that will be it. But I believe in what the children need. Um, in you know, other than day camp, I'm a licensed therapist. I'm in touch with, you know, uh, 10, 20 uh, kid clients a week. I run a Zoom show for those Hungarian boys' parents know that. I run a Zoom show where I'm being in touch with 300 to 500 kids on a daily basis. Uh, the kids are cooped up. They've been following these orders, some more, more strict than others. They have been cooped up uh, one month, a second month. By the time July rolls around, they will have four months that they didn't have structure and that they did not have um, a reprieve. They needed I genuinely believe it's a mental health issue. Um, I think whatever happened is already a mental health issue. There'll be lots written about it. Uh, there'll be a lot of interesting things, whether, you know, from the Hassan Makalas who did not get to have the dream wedding they wanted to the people who found themselves uh, discovering their family members because they were stuck with them for four months and they never really spent that much time with them in the first place. That's obviously, that's what's happened. It's happened. But when we're talking about children, if we want to know, is it essential? Obviously, everybody has a different meaning of the word essential. To some, you know, uh, you know, going away to Florida two months in the middle of the winter, uh, two weeks in the middle of winter is essential to some not. But I believe, I think we can all agree that for children to have a day camp, a structured program after four months of not having any structure is essential. It's important enough that we advocate for it as such. Is it safe? It's a million dollar question. If I knew the straight answer to say yes or no, I'd probably be having in my own TV show every morning to talk right after the, Trump, the president, I would talk about it for an hour. The answer though is like this, the state, the state of New York, this is not um, some rogue state. This is not a, uh, the, the states that maybe um, went along with the conspiracy theory. This is a liberal state. And when the state of New York is opening up pizza shops and parks and retail, which is what it's doing by mid-June, some of it is already opening now, some is opening June 5th and 6th, some is opening up on June 15th. So when end of June rolls around, the parks, the retails will be open. That is because the state feels it's past the crisis point. So then what we're asking is that we should be considered among those early phases. Obviously, we're going to need to have guidelines, safety guidelines. It's not going to be a typical year. But if the children's park can operate, so can we. And that is the main argument that we want to put out there. It's not about the fact is that, okay, everything is locked down open up camps. That's ridiculous. We wouldn't say that. It's everything is opening. Kids are going to be out there. And the question is, okay, so if they're everywhere else, if they're in Walmart and it's safe and they're in parks and it's safe because those parks are opening as they did in New Jersey, they open up certain parts of New Jersey parks have been opening. So by the end of June, when the parks are going to be open, the pizza shops will be open and all the other stores, we're saying, if they can operate, so can we. Let's talk a plan. Let's find a plan and let's do it. What is the safety plan? So it's important, the safety plans has been going around. The American Camps Association come out, just came out with a safety uh, plan. Um, you can look it up. We took uh, Mechaverian Boys just to be on the ready. We took uh, some of their recommendations. We implemented it to be specific for us um, because I know how we run. I know where my challenges lie. I know where, um, where, where the, so to speak, issues and risks are. Obviously, this will be tailored to every camp. The reason I'm presenting this, even though I'm not talking strictly to Hungarian Boys camp, um, parents, is because I think it's important to realize is that we're not burying our head in the sand. Directors understand the need for a plan, and we have a plan uh, to share with you some of the outline of the Hungarian Boys plan is as follows. Um, we have four parts of the day that has to uh, conform to safety to make sure that if there is an infection, it doesn't pass on um, to whole groups and so on and so forth, right? Obviously, we're not locked down in one area. We're going back and forth to home, and therefore, a kid could bring it with him and then Chas Shalom spread it, right? So that's what we're trying to avoid. Um, now, the four parts of the day is the busing to and from camp, the class setting, which is, in other words, 
what Goyesha camps don't have, and that is that the kids are sitting and learning in the morning. Uh, we're going to call it homeroom over here, in other words, because each class has their own place. The outdoor activities, in other words, sports, and then a whole camp activities, which is like shows. And again, this is just an outline. There's many sub details here, but I wasn't going to keep you, you know, for a, you know, for a long time with the details. I just wanted you to get a basic idea of, for example, as to what we're doing. The buses. The buses is one of our biggest challenges is because it brings the kids from different um, parts of the mountains. It's the same colonies on the same bus route every day, but obviously it's bringing a kid from a variety. And what we propose and what we're ready to do, and we're, we're, um, when I say ready, I don't mean just emotionally. We're actually organized to do it as the, each one of our buses has a bus monitor. That's not a new thing. That has been like that all the years. And we scan the boys with their barcodes as they get on. And what we will do this year is we will be testing for temperature before. Um, before the kids get on the bus where you have thermometers that test by forehead. And if there's abnormal temperature, the kids do not get on the bus. Children must be wearing a mask. Again, this is as we stand right now. If things change, it becomes less of an issue. We'll talk about it then. But children must be wearing a mask by the time the bus arrives for pickup. The bus monitor gets off, he takes their temperature. If they're okay, they proceed to move on to the bus. They sanitize their hands with a uh, Purell station that's at the beginning of the bus, and they get onto the bus, and masks are worn until they arrive at their homeroom, which is, in other words, until they arrive in their classroom. We have a team. Um, uh, we hired extra staff that is going to disinfect the bus after every trip. That means after the morning trip and then after the evening trip. That is for the buses. Then there is the homeroom learning and activities. Now, the American Camp Association, if you look at the um, recommendations, one of the things that they're doing, and they've been doing that in Israel as well, and when they went back to school, is keeping it in groups. So, in other words, if Cholila, one group, has an issue, then that what happens is, is that it's strictly limited to that group. And our grades, because we're set up by grades for learning, um, even big classes, 45 or 50, we can keep in a group of 50. The group, the number 50 is uh, the recommendation of the American Camp Association. Again, I have to check, but that was what I've seen last. Um, that's where the number they're looking at, and that's the number that we're mentioning as well, is that we can keep it that way, which means is that when the kids show up in their classroom, in their classrooms, it's masks off, that is one group. And the idea is that Khalil Bakas, if one child from there is diagnosed with the virus, then the other ones, um, we know who they are, they're a group, and they would have to quarantine until the, you know, for the time being to make sure that we have no symptoms. But it doesn't shut down the whole camp. Lunch, which is, you know, we're serving lunch this year, but again, whether they would bring their own or we serve makes no difference. The point being is it will be served in their homerooms, which means they are going to be their recess, which is a time where everybody gets out together, will have to be staggered. So in other words, every homeroom has it at a different 15 minutes, staggered at different times. Bathroom sinks and other public touch areas will be cleaned and disinfected once an hour, as is, it was cleaned four or five times a day. But I'm gonna move it up to being once an hour. Even though just on a separate notice this morning, uh, just today the CDC came out is that it's not uh, through touchy areas. That doesn't seem to be the main way the virus transforms. But again, we're not, this is what we're proposing um, and we are committing to doing this. Outdoor activities. Um, outdoor activities are the easier part. It's outdoor. It's always by bunk. Sometimes we used to put one bunk against the other. We don't have to do that. Uh, we'll keep it by the bunk. The bunk is, um, stays with themselves. The bunk plays with themselves. And the distancing from the other bunks will be maintained. During rainy days, that's a challenge. Rainy days will have to be either activities take place in their homerooms, um, which means they go back to their classrooms and that's where they do their indoor activity with their counselors so for example if we're getting them involved in a craft or if it's something that we want to do everybody together we have the option of using the gym the gym those who have been to Camp Kavarim know it is very large it has these huge uh, garage doors it is a 50 40 50 foot ceiling it is uh, more or less considered like it's, it's outdoory in that sense and we will have pre-marked pre-taped on the floor um, where uh, uh, bunks are um, when we put the whole camp in our gym together, it doesn't even use up about not even a fifth of the gym, uh, just from past experiences. So it's really a place that uh, we can distance them into their groups. Swimming is a big question. From what the research has shown is the water itself is not an issue. Again, we'll take whatever the campus, the American Camp Association recommends. If they stick to this, that it's non-issue um, having uh, the water is a non-issue, regular chlorinated water is a non-issue, uh, then the only thing it becomes is the contact 
in terms of when they come there. We will have to keep it staggered. Uh, we had a meeting about it. It might not be that every kid can go swimming every day. We might have to do certain grades go swimming uh, Mondays and Wednesdays, and the other ones Tuesdays and Thursdays. Again, none of these are fun and easy for us to do, but I think that camps could commit to them and do them. Um, water and obviously there would be disinfecting of the public areas, you know, where they dress and undress. Whole camp activities, which is very popular for us in Camp Haverim, uh, shows, etc. We'll have to use, uh, for the most part, we will do them outdoor in a place that allows the proper distancing. Um, you know, obviously some of our signature activities that involve really being put together will have to be changed. Again, these are the uh, outlines for as we stand right now. And I point that as we stand right now is because every week in this pandemic has been a lifetime. There's changes all the time. But I think, and this is the part that we're trying to impress upon the officials from all different um, you know, fronts, and that is we could come up with a plan. We could present it to you. We can talk about it. If it gets only better, as the Manoim. But we definitely can do this. It's possible to do this as a country that put a man on the moon. We can figure out how in the post-crisis stage, how to be able to open up our day camps. Um, obviously, I just want to say is that this plan is an outline and the plan is, is works for us because we know how we operate. Different day camps that I might be tuning in and I invited others to tune in uh, might have different challenges. To some of them, busing might be easier because it's one bus per colony and vice, you know, which the kids are anyways with each other and they don't have that issue. I know my issues. I know where the challenges are for us. And I think that any Camp Haverian parent who knows me uh, knows is that the children's welfare is the top priority by me. Um, nothing is more important to me. So um, this is not coming from Chas any, uh, you know, callous, uh, you know, decision. This is something that we really believe we could do. So now let's aim to have a discussion. This, I think, is very important. And if there's one message I want to come out of this discussion tonight is that the idea is we need to make it be that it's essential for day camps to open. If a genuine discussion is held and a science-based decision is made that day camps cannot operate, fine, that, then, then it's good. Then v'chaibam. We have a mitzvah day raisa v'chaibam. And that's what we're going to do. This is not, you know, for, for, for us to weep about the fact that it would or won't. Um, the point is, is to ignore the need and parks and shops and everything is going to open. That doesn't make any sense. You know, I can launch into the fact is that for the first time in nine weeks, I left my house this past uh, Monday. I was, uh, you know, invited to a meeting in Williamsburg that I needed to attend in person. So I, I, you know, suited up with the mask and the hand sanitizer. And I got into an Uber to go to Williamsburg. And nine weeks since the day after Purim, when the storm had ever told us to quarantine way before the governor, I have not been out. And I, in my mind, it seemed from the concept of lockdown that the place was shut down. And it's not. And I'm not talking about Heimish Barbuck, which is maybe different, you know, people, big families. I'm talking about the non-Jewish areas between here and Williamsburg. Um, they didn't get the memo. My point being is that I think people tried, people had it for eight, nine weeks. That part is done. And that's what's going to happen as it reopens. People are going to be out there. So we need to be able to say, okay, day camps have to happen. Now, there's a little bit of confusion about age code. The... Uh, um, American Jewish camp organization, you might have seen the Yeshiva World News and Hamudia, uh, did they not take care of this problem? Didn't HCO work this out? No, they didn't. Very important to understand. HCO presented a case for sleepaways. What happened was, and it's a long history to get into, but HCO, the American Jewish campus of her operators who put out this letter that made it to the Hamudia and Yeshiva World News, and by now it's been, you know, all over, they, um, uh, you know, proposed a mahalach for sleepaway camps to operate, they have their own, you know, ideas as to what they need. They don't want to have to, in camp itself, do any distancing or any of that. They simply want to work on the idea of a bubble. And that is, is that if we make sure that whatever comes into this bubble is safe, then in the bubble, we're fine. Um, that's their idea. So they did what they feel is needed to save their industry and, you know, the day camp industry. I don't mean to save their industry in terms of financial ruin. I'm talking about to be able to make their industry work. And they're still working on this with Albany. I know that they had a meeting today and the director, um, the director from uh, Shlomo Pfeiffer over there, the executive board member, um, he sent out a message uh, to his camp, which is camp. Romamu, I think, uh, that the meeting went well. Uh, this is all for sleepaways. So you might have heard a lot of talk about camp, but a tiny different sleep away. To the contrary, these uh, sleepaway camps clearly said no day camps on site. So you have to realize that if your kids went to Krasna, Satna, Minkach, no day camps this year in this proposal. In other words, if they have their way, there are no day camps operating 
period on those sleepaway camps. So if you hear Minkach is opening, that's without a sleepaway, without the, the day camp, um, and so on and so forth. That's where it stands right now. Somebody might say, well, but didn't all camp directors agree that the day camps are not safe and only sleepaway? That's what it sounded like from that letter, is that no, that's it. It has to be, we have to be safe. We're going to cancel day camps. Um, that was, so to speak, the message that came out, and they had like 40 camps signed on it. Um, no, that's just not the case. You just have to understand most directors were not consulted. Um, it was a decision that they had to do as an emergency response um, to some rumbling from locals. Uh, there were locals who were going to petition the governor not to allow, CAD, um, not to allow kids to open. And... Um, the uh you know the in, in order to counter that they came out with this letter basically saying we're going to go radical um and they figured this was going to give them the best chance to open um i'm getting questions in the chat which i will get to in the right point of the i want to uh, there's a point with questions so please send those questions in i see mr prostein sending a question i'm not ignoring it i just want to um you know be able to address it when i come to the part of questions so that's for the age co it's important to understand that that age co did their thing it's a whole discussion about sleep away and not about um the uh day camps so right now as it stands if you needed to sum it up right now as it stands there is no word from albany about the day camps other states have made statements about day camps state of florida had made uh, some other states have made statements about day camps um, you know, getting them to open. We don't have any statements from the uh, governor about it. We just have questions, which means he keeps on saying he doesn't know, he doesn't know. Um, no plans are being made other than, like I said, the, the American Camp Association is making plans, uh, HCO is making their plans, and Javier Boys made their plans. But we're not having a discussion with them where they say, okay, let's try to make this happen. What is it that you need? Um, so right now, it's, it's kind of just, you know, it's in limbo. In, in terms of that. So if you're looking at it right now, you have to be able to say, uh, right now the kids are going to be, you know, with you in your bungalow for July and August. That's where it stands. Um, so let's look at these facts. And I think this is the point of, of an intellectual argument that we're trying to make. And again, keyword intellectual. This is not emotional, getting all hooked up and saying, you know, uh, you know, it's not fair or whatever. The fact is tens of thousands of kids are coming upstate. Um, the locals by now realize that as well. You own a house, so if you have a, a, a bungalow, it depends on how it's registered. There's no law in the world that can keep uh, people out. Uh, you know, there may be people upstate who would want to keep Jews out. Uh, you know, in 2020, in the United States of America, if I own a home upstate, uh, you can't keep me out just because I'm coming from the epicenter of uh, New York City. It just doesn't work like that. So they are people there, going to be tens of thousands of kids there. Right now, as we speak, there are thousands and thousands of kids there, but there will be more. It's going to be packed to the gills. More people this year are going to go up and make it possible to go up. I means they're going to try very hard to go up because they're being cooped up in their apartments. The parks and shops will be open. That's another fact. The state by June 20th or 25th, are, these things are going to be open. And the third fact is the kids will not be staying cooped up, but they're going to be in those parks and shops. I mean, that's just, it just, you don't have to be a genius to put these three together to understand is that there are going to be kids, families with three or four or five kids, not sleep away, not bochrim. Those kids, what are they going to do with them all day? Some bungalow colonies are big enough they can make some day camps of their own. Most bungalow colonies by now don't. We know that for a fact, Kaver and boys, that's how we get our clientele. So these kids, where are they going to be? Um, they are going to be in the parks, in the shop. So if we are coming from the perspective, if the state of New York is coming from the perspective of saying, wait a second, we have to contain the virus, you're not containing it by having these groups of kids from 30 to 100 bungalow colonies running around Walmart, Memorial Park, Morningside Park, uh, renting the canoes, going all over the place, keeping six feet away that it just it's not going to happen just just a realistic approach so we have an option so you know if we were able to keep them locked down through august well, okay great then let's the safer the better but you know we we're not it's not possible we, we have to just be honest about it and it's not a chasarin in us it's just a human nature okay these kids have been locked down march april may june it comes july they want to go out so we can have either a regulated safety conscious program, which means a, a program that will be looking out to make sure things are safe, or we can just go with the, I don't know what, we're just not doing anything. Uh, I don't know. We just can't figure it out. Bury my head in the sand approach and the children are going to be all over the place anyways. And I think that's what the governor has to hear. That's what the locals have to hear. I mean, obviously we're not 
be busy arguing with the locals. That's not what it's about. But I think that is the approach that has to go out there. So some of the questions that were submitted, and I want to start first with Mr. Prostein's question in the, uh, in the chat. What about the uh, new kids disease um, that they say is linked to coronavirus? So from my understanding, and again, we're monitoring that, it is not a contagious disease, which means to say is that it's people who had had COVID, um, children who had had COVID, and then they, it's a complication of COVID later on. So in other words, is that a child who had COVID and recovered from it, there's a complication later on. It's not one of those diseases that is spreading through the, so to speak, spreading from one person to another. But again, it's in its infancy and the governor itself didn't know the answers to that. Um, so it's, 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 it's not, in other words, another disease that is running amok. It is, a, so to speak, a complication that is coming out of kids recovering from COVID. That's the information we have now. Obviously, again, I'll state this again. If in a month from now, a couple of weeks from now, Cholid of Achas, it becomes clear that it's not a possibility scientifically, legitimately thought about, then, then Adarab, I'll be the first. I, I love every one of the kids who are coming to Haverian Boys and any other Yiddish kid out there. That is not... Um, uh, you know, the question here. But when we're talking about the realistic approach, I don't think that, you know, as we stand right now, that that is uh, an issue. So uh, again, some of the questions I think I answered, but these were questions that were sent to me. So I put them a little bit in order. Uh, I get a mental health, is because I spoke about mental health to, to some people. Um, I get a mental health is a problem, but at least they're alive. Are you not afraid of risk to life? If I genuinely feel it's a risk to life, not me. If the state feels it's a risk for life, we're all staying home. But if the state says we're opening up pizza shops, if the state says the parks are open, because that's where we are right now, Baruch Hashem, the Abish to help us, we're past us. It was very painful and there were a lot of losses. But when we're coming to a point where it's beyond past us, then no. Then if we're opening all of those, and I think, yes, like we said before, opening up a uh, structured program where we're health conscious, we're regulated to, uh, to the Department of Health. I don't need to tell you what camps are regulated. Last year, Camp Aaron Boys was inspected by the state and by the local government, which means, you know, from, from, from Sullivan County and from the state of New York for the measles. And for every single piece of paper they went through and they looked, they dot the I's and they crossed the T's and they checked the pool. So yeah, so we have an option of having a regulated, governmented regulated program versus having the kids running amok in all over the place. Um, I worry about kids mixing with other kids. I think we, um, we spoke about that is that we're talking about keeping kids in their homeroom. Um, I, I don't, again, if you're coming to a colony, your kids are mixing with other kids. You're not going to colony X and keeping them indoors. That's not why you're going there. You could stay in, in, in Borough Park. So if you're coming upstate, and again, this conversation is about upstate, you are going to mingle with the kids in your bungalow. So yes, so we're offering a second mingling is with the homeroom, but not with 350 kids. Like we uh, laid out earlier, um, it is with the homeroom kids, I and mean, I'm going to sum it up at the end for those who came on later. Um, can pools be clean enough? We address that as well. From right now, what the research shows that the water itself is a non-issue, so it just becomes the areas around. Um, the good news is that at 90 degrees, the, 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 the virus doesn't last very long, period. And like I said, the CDC came out that touchy surfaces is a non-issue so much. Not that they didn't change recommendations yet, but again, I've been following it very closely. But yes, that we could disinfect the dressing area and, and, and keep it staggers. Um, schools and schools were the first uh, way this uh, virus spread. How is this different? Um, so just a little bit of information. It's not, uh, uh, schools and schools cannot be put in the same category. Uh, research showing right now from uh, Britain and Australia that schools are not how it's spread. Children are not the way it's spread um, to one another, so to speak, means to say that's it. None of us, let's, sorry, let me take that back. There are non-risks so much between children. It's much more about spreading it to the adults. Um, so yeah, so in other words, we're not, what we're saying simply right now again and it's the same response to this if we were now in march 15th this would not be a conversation the point being is that we're talking about shoes are opening we're talking about right now that the shops are opening so if those are opening we can find a way to open it so i think the, the answer to a lot a lot of the um a lot a lot of these questions really referring to the same thing is that the point of opening the point of when we want to open is at the point where the state will be open enough and then the question really just becomes a priority and right now for them fishing and hunting is a priority and construction is a priority and whatever is a priority and we're asking for it to be a priority as well um, how are day camps in the country different in the city um, i'll answer that shortly just about the fact that in governor como's own metrics of what's considered to be open um, when are you allowed to be open um, the upstate is reaching those goals uh, much quicker um, then they're going to be here in, um, 
in New York City. So New York City might take a while before they reach the metrics that are set forth by the governor as to what is safe enough to open. So again, since the mission that we're saying is that when it's safe enough to open, other things put us on the priority list. So I think that's a key difference between us and the city. The city is taking longer to get there. Um, so again, I think that we answered a, a question seven, the big difference between kids mingling with the ones in the county and the ones uh, elsewhere. Yes, that is something that you're make, you, you, you gotta be aware of, is that there's gonna be a point that we're gonna mix them with the homeroom, but only with the homeroom kids. Um, and on the bus, we address that also um, as we, in, in the safety plan. Um, is there an option that if they shut for now, would I open for second half? Not likely uh, because it becomes uh, totally not uh, financially manageable. Uh, I was going to use the word not profitable, but that would have been laughable because I don't think we're profitable in the first place. That's not what it's about, but it would have to be possible to even, you know, to do it. I don't think so. Um, I'm wondering about day camp. Uh, camp, I understand it can be contained. What about day camp? I think I answered that. Is there something we didn't know? Uh, well, you didn't know everything I told you before. So I think that's the, that's the point. So I think I addressed all the questions. Somebody just sent in a question. Um, uh, is the coming from the bungalow counties where the kids will be coming in contact with one another? So I think that, again, I don't know when this person just came on. I'll go back to that point of the safety plan of the way we see it has to work is that the busing, um, again, just to answer the question, the person has come, I think came on late, um, is the way we see it is the four stages, and I will put this Beis Hashem out there if whoever wants to have this uh, outline of the safety plan that we put together in Javier and Boys. But just sum it up, the kids coming with the uh, bus, um, are going to be uh, checked before they come on the bus, masks on the bus, sanitizing before they come on the bus, um, because the bus is the most mingling point. And then when they get to camp, they are in their homeroom, which means in their grade, in their classroom. That's where they have lunch. Recess is staggered, and they play only with their own. And when it comes to whole camp activities, they are in um, outdoors in marked areas. Again, I, I did not put forth any plan which would sound good on paper, but I cannot keep. Um, I can say that for other plans I'm not here to criticize, but I've seen plans from other ones that were just very sweet um, to be able to put it um, out there to the governor or whatever, but it's not realistic. Another question. Um, right now, the metrics upstate are meeting the criteria, but if we all go upstate, wouldn't the numbers be different? Uh, so yes and no. Uh, the metrics upstate, so just to be able to explain, um, Nehemia Isby, uh, thank you for the question. Um, the metrics for the upstate, the metrics for the governor were simply how many hospitalizations, how many hospital beds are empty, how many new cases. Um, I don't think so. The sad part is, is that Borapak, because we had such a high rate of infection, is probably probably mostly past it. Um, that is probably the truth. But again, it, it, is it possible that when we all go upstate, there will, the metrics will change? Here is, here is what I think is an interesting thing. If, I don't have a number how many people are upstate right now. But if I had to guess, I would say there's at least in Sullivan County alone, 5,000 families that went up there. Uh, that's what it seems to me. I don't, know, I don't have a number. Uh, nothing, the, the, the end of the world didn't happen, which means to say it's not like everybody got all out there and got sick. So the metrics that he put forth, and I don't remember them by heart, because I'm getting dizzy from all his uh, press conferences. Um, but the, the metrics that he put forth involve how many hospitalization, how many hospital beds are empty, how many new cases. And it's, it's Baruch Hashem going down. And at the end of June, we will be there. And again, let's keep the conversation going on one thing. And that is um, the conversation going for, for uh, you know, what we're advocating for. And what we're advocating for is the fact is that put us on an important enough list and then let's create what would work. Another question, will anything change for staff? I did not put that in the outline because we're still discussing that. And the fact of the matter is that we don't want the staff to re, uh, so to speak, recontaminate the kids. So we have a few options for that. And that is, is that either the staff, when they're interacting with the kids, because the staff, when they'll be with each other, I don't believe that I'll be able to have them so to speak, not be with each other. That's part of their enjoyment, that the staff are with each other all the time. But what we might do is that the staff, when they're interacting with the kids, will be wearing masks. I did not put it in there because I, I didn't know if I could commit to that yet, but we definitely need to figure out as to, so to speak, when we're keeping it in groups of 50, where do the staff come into the picture? So we have two options on that. Is if we're, but the most likely option is the fact is that at the part of the day where the kids interact with the staff, don't forget, the Rebbe's in the morning, they don't interact. They will be wearing masks. They will be, you know, keeping their distance. We might put up like a glass, like they do in Israel, like a plexiglass where they teach behind all ideas that we're toying with. 
um, but and then in the afternoon where their uh, counselors are involved with the uh, with the kids most probably they will be wearing masks um, the only reason I'm not asking the kids to wear masks all day is because it's not going to happen so therefore we need to do it on the bus they will wear masks once they come there and they go to their homeroom they will be so to speak free to take it off because we're containing it in a group of 50. but again these are all valid questions um lunch with the whole camp again um those who are coming on late i feel bad because i already addressed this before and i guess i should send out the safety plan lunch will be in the homeroom which means in the classrooms where they are learning they will be so to speak uh, um, in their bungalows um you know not bungalows sorry in their classrooms that's where they will be from when they arrive until the um so to speak you know, the part where they go outdoor. Uh, somebody's asking, why can't the staff be tested with a nose swab a day before camp? Um, it's going to be the other way around. We're going to test for antibodies. If the entire staff has antibodies, um, then we're probably good. Um, we'll have to, you know, we'll have to be able to, you know, see if that's what we want to do or not. Okay, let us move on. Um, what efforts were made? So we reached out to the Aguda. Aguda, well, responded that they're not taking on this issue. Um, that was more or less their response. They just got ahead a press release where they're calling on the governor to allow uh, camps and um, yeshivas to open. Um, so, you know, it's, it's an interesting thing. The Aguda is kind of, you know, they don't want to ruffle feathers. They want to be good for everybody. Um, we're trying to make it clear that we need them. Um, I did not get like a very like, yes, we will do it. They did champion the sleepaway effort. They didn't respond much. I mean, they, I, they responded to my email, but basically saying is that, you know, kind of do your own thing. Um, I contacted assembly uh, men, uh, Simcha Eichestein did not respond to me yet. I contacted HCO to ask if they can help. And they basically said they're doing their own thing with sleepaways. So that leaves us with us. Do I believe that anything can be done? Yes. Um, let's, uh, you know. The government by the people for the people. I know in New York, it doesn't feel that way. It doesn't feel like it's by the people. It doesn't feel it's for the people. But again, we could get these things changed. And how do we advocate? Call, write, and call again. Remember, what is the message that we're trying to send? We're just trying to send a message that this is essential. Um, and essential, essential, essential. It's essential for our children. It's essential for their health. It's essential, period. End of story. Um, so... If, if we can put it out there, it's essential, they will make it happen. Um, because again, let's remember, we're not talking about they should open up mid-pandemic. We're talking about that we want them to open, like when they're opening pizza shops, make us be important. Don't throw us under the bus. Don't make us less important than your golf courses. Make it understood is that we need to have a solution. And that is what we ask. If they treat it as a must, they will figure it out. These are the places, I don't know if you want to uh, grab a pen and write it down. It's the all information that's available on the web. Governor Como and Assemblyman Eichenstein and uh, Senator Felder and then Agoda. These have to all, 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 all be able to write. So I don't know if you want to, I'm, I'm advising to write to Governor Como um, and to call. There is a contact. If you, it, there's no email address. You have to use the contact form on the, on the, um, on the website. There is uh, Assemblyman Eichenstein, call both numbers, email, uh, get your friends to do it and keep the message short and clean and simple. And that is we need day camps to operate. It's essential. It's not if, it's how. Um, and it's extremely important that to, uh, to do it. Um, and, you know, and Aguda is of America. I think Aguda would feel it's important. It's important. Just to give you an example, the press conference, the press release that came tonight from Aguda asking the governor to consider shul's important came because there was a yeshiva that was busted with 100 kids. Now, I'm not advocate. I don't think that they should have done that. We have tzaddikim that we follow. And I didn't hear any tzaddikim said you should go on the ground and learn. But Aguda realized, oh, oh my gosh, it's going getting out of hand. So we have to advocate. I don't think we should come to that. I think Aguda should hear is that we're having 10,000 parents upstate who say it's not okay not to have day camp. Um, I just want to address one or two questions that came in here. Um, how will we work it out with Vialopol that's on the same grounds? Well, again, way we're looking at it right now, they will have to be separate from us. That is something that we're going to work with, as is this very little interaction that we have with them. But obviously, if they're going to be on their lockdown and we're going to be on ours, we're going to keep it to zero. Um, do I think it's possible that uh, by the summer things will be back to normal? Normal is subjective, so uh, it's hard to answer, but I hope so. I hope some closer to normal. Um, so um, a question, how do we explain your points to the state regarding that uh, without camps, the kids are going to be all over the place? And yeah, okay, good. So this is a trick, right? Uh, a tricky situation. How do we tell the governor, look, buddy, if you're not careful, there's going to be 10,000 kids running around Sullivan County. Um, so you might as well give them day camps, right? We can't picture it like that. I think it's important to come from the perspective is the fact that, that the kids have been locked down for four months. We're going to be upstate and the kids are going to need a reprieve. 
and not kind of threatening they're going to be all over the place. Basically saying is that Mr. Governor, the word essential is, 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 you know, subjective. And for us parents, you know, of young children who have been cooped up, it is essential that they have a, a, you know, a place to be. It is essential that they get out and they play. Uh, so I think the key word is to be able to say it's essential and not letting go on it. Um, so I think that's important. Any other questions? Um, I'm going to send out the contact info, um, and you know, by, by, you know, to the governor's centers, I'm going to send it out. Uh, question is the lunch program still on? Yes. Um, the lunch program is still on, which means to say is that if we're going to do it, tuck in their home rooms, it's going to be prepared meals that are going to come in little boxes, sandwiches and stuff like that, something like that, that they're going to have. But definitely, you know, where we're standing right now is not going to be in everybody together. Um, any other question? Um, um, yes, uh, we're having uh, uh, Rabbi Keller, who is the uh, owner of, uh, of, of where we rent from, um, a very, very dear friend of Camp Khaverim, and he says Camp Khaverim runs exclusively on their own schedule, and Vialopol never interacted with them. Um, and yes, I mean, that's what I said before. In other words, it's, uh, the interactions last year were very little, and we can make it down to zero. It's not a problem. Um, is there a way to present to them that this is education more than a camp category? Uh, it, you could do that. The problem is, is that the word education doesn't, doesn't talk to them, which means to say is that, you know, it's like saying to somebody, well, you can have a PhD or you can stay safe. They don't look at it that way. When we're talking about mental health essential, that's okay. So for example, I'm a licensed therapist. I was always allowed to go. I was never under lockdown. I didn't because we did Zoom calls and we did phone calls, but technically I was allowed to because the state recognizes that mental health is an essential service. So I think it's important that we put it out there is that these kids are at a breaking point and I don't think that that is by the way exaggerating um, perhaps I can send a draft uh, uh, template I could do that as well uh, I, I don't mind doing that a draft template um, you, you know that everybody could send even though I think some of those lose their value I think that anybody taking a few minutes you don't have to be a you know Mark Twain you just write it in your own words I think it'll be fine where does Simcha Felder fit in? Well, he's a senator and he can present what's important or not. Um, again, our Yiddish politicians are walking a tightrope. They never want to ruffle feathers. They never want to be the ones who are going to say that, look, you know, the Jews need the thing. At the same time, though, I think they're representing us. And I think this is not a Jewish question. I would advocate these just as much for the Johnny Appleseeds that are going to go to Landers Day Camp in upstate New York. And I, and, and I think that's important to put it out there. Um, and, you know, that it's not, it's not about Haverian boys, it's about all children. I think that Yiddish and Kindlach have their own challenges of the fact that we come from bigger families and so on and so forth. And we're living in a lot of us living in smaller apartments. I think that that carries its own challenge, but yes. Um, uh, if there are any other questions, please, uh, or if I missed your question, because I'm not, you know, I'm trying to scroll through the, the chat, make sure I, um, I'm just a point from uh, one of the mothers is that uh, doing activities while wearing masks can be dangerous because children do not have enough oxygen. Thank you for pointing that out. I think it is important. Um, and um, okay, so I don't know if, if anybody else, any other questions. I did not want to darshan go on for, uh, for forever. Um, so if there are any other questions, please, um, I'm sorry. Um, okay, so uh, 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 the director, the hands-on director in Camp Kaverim, who is also, um, I'm, I'm sorry, of Camp uh, Masmidim, Camp Silver Lake, uh, he's on, um, and he's sending the following statement that, that regarding the changing metrics of state, at this point, the only metrics that New York City has not met are the available hospital, hospital beds. So they wouldn't change the metrics of state. In other words, it's not like how many people are coming up state. It has to do with hospitalization, and otherwise we're not, um, you know, um, what happens if someone tests positive in camp? Again, I'm guessing that the person who's asking this came on late. We have it by group setting. The idea is you keep it in groups that the group stays with themselves the whole time based on the American Camp Association's um, recommendation. The number is 50. And in that case, those have to go home. So in other words, if one person in a group of 50 tests positive, then we send everybody home. And then obviously we can evaluate it then that those who may have antibodies, those who test or don't test, that's fine. We, that, that can be worked on. But the idea is to keep it in groups of 50. Um, so if there are no other questions, um, I, you know, want to sum it up. I thank everybody for coming on. I know that you have plenty of things to do, um, on, you know, on a random, uh, Tuesday evening, but, um, I believe that we could, if we try hard enough, make this be a conversation. I'm trying to, um, have Hamoudia and Yated and others cover it. Um, I, I, you know, again, I, I think this is much more than about the children of Camp Haverim. For those of Camp Haverim who may have come on now and you're wondering about your deposits, some people asking about refunds, Khalil, we don't open, we didn't spend a dime. It's all there and everything is guaranteed. So to speak, even the parts that we paid in rent, everybody's not understanding that it can have strong need be, it will reverse. So your money is safe. 
we will refund. This is not about Kem Chaverim, uh, you know, making it or not making it. This is about, um, you know, the children. I, I think the children deserve a summer. As somebody who has been running a day camp for 10 years and been in a camping business before, I could tell you for a fact that summers change kids around. Um, so, you know, uh, somebody's asking maybe all the kids should check for the antibodies. Um, it will not solve it for even one kid who doesn't have. That's where it would start, I believe. I mean, obviously, it would be just one kid, but if there'll be a percent of kids that don't, it would be a problem. Um, so anything else that anybody's asking? Um, um, okay, I think that I have it. I think I took care of it. All the questions. So again, thank you very much, everybody. And I will send out all this information. Um, I'm going to upload Bezer Shem this entire meeting to our YouTube channel. So if you want to refer somebody to it, you could. Um, I will also, Bezer Shem, uh, send out the, in a PDF file on our WhatsApp group of our outline for the safety. Um, obviously, it's just an outline. There are details that are not there. Um, but, you know, we'll update it as it goes along. And, um, and I will also, Bezer Shem, send out the contacts of who you can uh, advocate by. And if I can just end that if anybody has any contacts in media or in politics, make this be known, put it out there and keep the message one simple message. And that is we are essential, put us first in the list. This is not about trying to you know, knock out the lockdown or try to join any conspiracy theory. This is about the fact is that we have a mitzvah of a And right now that we did that part of it and we right now as it's opening up, we need to be able to put day camps as a priority. Thank you very much, everybody, for joining us. Um, and uh, we hope, Hazel Shem, this should work out for all of us and, uh, you know, for the workout for the children. That's the main thing that's important. Have a wonderful Gitanacht, everybody.